In recent months, because of Adobe's Terms of Service controversy, PhotoP has been recommended on the internet as one of the top Photoshop replacements. So as someone who regularly makes videos on another Photoshop replacement, Affinity Photo, I thought it would be interesting to try out and see what PhotoP offers. So in this video, I'll be talking about five PhotoP standout features. But before I do, let's give a quick background on PhotoP. Here are some interesting tidbits about the company. PhotoP has been around since 2013. It is developed by just one person, Ivan Kutskier, who has never sought VC funding, preferring to grow the platform independently. By the way, this reminds me of the CEO of Gentleman Coders, who also single-handedly developed the raw editor Nitro, which we reviewed a few months ago. But PhotoP might be even a more impressive achievement for just one person. PhotoP uniquely is built as a web application written in JavaScript. Despite being a website though, it is interesting to note that PhotoP is actually run locally, making it extremely fast as all the resources are stored on your computer, not on any server. PhotoP is also free and makes most of its money via ads. In fact, according to this article, PhotoP earned $1.5 million in revenue in 2023. More impressive is the yearly maintenance cost of only $700, which is the cost of hosting and paying for a domain name. So it's really a tightly run operation. I suspect the revenue figure is much higher in 2024 due to all the free advertisement he's getting nowadays. Another interesting tidbit is in 2024, users of PhotoP opened 3 million files a day. That's a lot of usage for PhotoP. So now that we have a background of the company, let's run through the standout features. The first standout feature is its price. As mentioned, it is completely free. Money is made via ads which appear at the side of the screen. To remove ads, PhotoP offers a premium service that will also get you certain AI tools that we'll be discussing in a moment. When it comes to the premium service, you have three options, $8 for one month, $15 for three months, or $50 for a year, which runs to about $4 a month, less than half the price of an Adobe subscription. By the way, unlike other competitors, PhotoBee's premium service payment is non-recurring. It will automatically revert back to the free service with ads once the duration of the premium service lapses. You have to manually pay in order to reactivate the service. This is something I like about their model. Simple, no contracts, completely pay per use, which is the way I think all premium services should work. The second standout feature is its comprehensive selection tools. For a free app, the amount of selection tools you can use is impressive. First is the quick selection tool, which has built-in edge detection and works similar to Photoshop's and Affinity's selection brush. To demonstrate, let's get rid of the sky in this image. I'll choose the quick selection tool. I'll make the selection. There, the sky is selected. I'll invert the selection. I'll click the mask button. As you can see, the tool works accurately. The second notable selection tool is its object selection tool. To demonstrate, let's mask the first car in this image. I'll drag a rectangle over the car. As you can see, with just one operation, the entire car is selected. However, there are some errors. Let's refine the selection. And that brings us to the third tool, the polygonal lasso selection, which works exactly like the polygonal selection tool in Affinity Photo. I'll choose the tool. I'll use it to fix the errors. There. A perfect selection. So that was the second standout feature, its robust selection tools. Let's move on to the third. The third standout feature is Refine Edges functionality. This works similar to Affinity's Refine Brush, 
which is to be used with subjects with complicated edges like fur or hair. Let's demonstrate the tool with this image. I'll start off by using object selection to select the person. Unfortunately, it didn't do a great job. I'll fix the problem using Refine Edge. I'll click the Refine Edge button. As you can see, doing so brings me to the Refine Edge interface. The way Refine Edge works is you paint white on areas you want selected, black for areas you want deselected, and gray for borders. And those may include complicated edges, such as fur or hair. There, the selection has been fixed. To get out of Refine Edge, I'll set the drop down to Raster Mask. I'll click OK. The fourth standout feature is a powerful select subject. This feature is part of the previously discussed premium service. To demonstrate, let's work on this image. As you can see, the hair in this portrait has fine detail that might pose a problem for an automated tool like Select Subject. Let's see if it works. I'll click the Select Subject button. I'll create the mask. Looking closely, you can see it was a very accurate selection. Let's move on to another example. In this image, the portrait's headscarf blends very closely with the light background. Will it give select subject a problem? Not at all. Finally, let's try to select the pizza. The shadow of the pizza is almost indistinguishable from the table. Will select subject be able to distinguish it? Again, it works. So even with this limited set of examples, you can see that Photopea's select subject performs pretty reliably. Based on my experience with other select subject tools and the fact that most other photo editors don't even have such a tool makes select subject a standout feature. The fifth standout feature is generative AI. Like select subject, this feature is only available with the premium service. Why is this a standout feature, you might ask? Well, if you follow other photo editors like I do, you would know that only a few editors support generative AI, and even fewer support it with a version that works well. It's incredible to think that of all the photo editors in the world, PhotoP, which is run by only one person, is one of those that has such a service. But is it any good? Let's test it by using generative AI to remove the face mask on this person. I'll use a lasso to draw a selection around the mask. I'll click Remove. As you can see, a pretty good result. Next, let's use the text to image prompt a la generative fill to replace the plain shirt with a colored red shirt. I'll make the selection. I'll type the prompt. There, another good looking result. So based on these examples, I think it's fair to say that Photopea's generative AI works as advertised, but whether it performs better than its competitors will require a more in-depth comparison. So there you have it, five standout features of Photopea. Clearly, Photopea has some very powerful features, but are there any disadvantages? Yes, in terms of disadvantages, the main one has to be its performance. Since it is a web app, it will not run as smoothly as a native app. I also wouldn't run Photopea on a mobile device like an iPad due to laggy performance and also because the UI is not really designed for mobile. Also, the ads might be annoying for some. Finally, let's answer the question, is Photopea the best free Photoshop replacement? For that question, I would say definitely yes. Looking at the landscape, I don't see a free tool that comes remotely close to what Photopea can do. The creator has certainly a winner on his hands, and given its unmatched value proposition and lack of competition, 
I think it will continue to be successful far into the future. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any thoughts on Photopy or if you can recommend any other free or paid Photoshop alternatives. Perhaps you've used some yourself and can recommend those. I'd love to know about those as well. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.